And for the weight of the Alpha Fly, 6.8 ounces in my size or 194 grams, I am incredibly. First run, first run in the Nike Alpha Fly Next Percents. Oh my my. All right, so when I was in college at the University of Colorado, we used to say at the end of hard races, hard workouts, we'd yell at each other like, tighten the screws, tighten the screws. You know when you're doing a wood shop project and you just kind of uh, tighten those screws down and just to bring everything together. That's what I was thinking to myself today on the long run. You know what? There's no races on the horizon. Let's go for it a little bit. Let's open up the carburetor a little bit. So that's what I did today in the Nike Alpha Fly Next Percents. The weather was perfect. The conditions were perfect. And oh yeah, my mindset was after yesterday, my leg, you heard on, in yesterday's vlog, my legs were tired. And so I, I reduced my volume yesterday. Because I did that, my legs felt not perfect, but great waking up this morning so that was also a sign like okay let's open it up a little bit and that's what i did 23 miles uh there it is on your screen in kilometers about 500 feet of vertical or sorry 450 feet of vertical gain and i managed to hold a 540 per mile average pace so solid solid effort out there and i was thinking to myself and if you if you look at the data here it is on strava if you want to go analyze the run you can at about mile 11 yes there was a dog chase and so my heart i had to sprint like i i i had to sprint like my heart rate went from like 165 to about 180 ish so if you see a heart rate spike around mile 11 approximately that's what it was a good old dog chase and i managed to outrun it but man it was not good so um and oh yeah at about mile uh, about mile 10 or so I was thinking to myself, this has the potential to get really, really ugly because the pace was really solid and I'm at elevation. Uh, but sure enough, I managed to hold a pretty good pace. I was fading toward the end. I think my last three or four miles were around like 550 to uh, six flat pace. Uh, but overall, a solid effort. I feel real good about it in the Nike Alpha Fly next percents. And one last thought on the run today as we dive into the first impressions, not my full review, that'll happen after 50 miles is that uh, this is a racing shoe, a, a, you know, an, ag an aggressive marathon and half marathon racing shoe from Nike. And so I knew on today's run and before the run, I got to take this thing up to some higher speeds in order to give you an accurate uh, assessment of my first run in them, my, my, how they performed. If I was running seven minute pace or 630 pace for me, I knew that wasn't going to be fast enough. So that's why I opened up the carbur, tighten those screws down, tighten those screws down. Okay, everyone, I am a men's US size seven and a half. So all the weight and all the measurements that you're going to hear over the next five, 10 minutes is a seven and a half for, uh, for men's uh, size uh, seven and a half men's US, okay? Uh, and there's not many pairs of these out there on the marketplace. Like they did a limited release Nike about, oh, what was it, two or three weeks ago now? And it was very difficult to get a pair of these shoes. Therefore, there's not a lot of data out there yet from other people testing the shoe and Nike hasn't released all of their information on the drop. Uh, so everything is a little bit in flux as far as the data on the shoe, but I'll do my best here. Okay, so from my measurements, and I don't have a laser, so just so you know, uh, World Athletics is now requiring under 40 millimeters. That was big news about a month ago, uh, maybe a month and a half ago, 
40 millimeters is the max stack height that a shoe can have in order to for the elites to use the shoe in an Olympic or world championship race or any race that is, let's say, like attempting to set a world record like the Berlin Marathon, London Marathon, etc., etc. So for me and my size, I am measuring right around 38 millimeters. Now this is, uh, again, I don't have a laser to measure that. That is a, a caliper that I purchased a while back and it's I'm doing my best to measure it as accurate as possible, but I'm getting right around 38 millimeters for the stack head in the heel. And again, about 31, uh, 31 to 30 millimeter stack height in the forefoot. So that's you're looking at about an eight millimeter drop for the Alpha Fly next percent. And for the weight of the Alpha Fly, 6.8 ounces in my size or 194 grams. I am incredibly excited to make another vlog uh, probably in the next two to three weeks. I don't know when yet. Uh, comparing the Alpha Fly to the next percent to the four percent to compare all the weights it's going to be very i can't wait for that vlog but that is in my size and again i'm not getting a lot of data out there from other people's sizes and for the upper on the fly at the top of the shoe the material that wraps around uh, the top of your foot it is a fly knit material okay they're calling it the atom knit that's the official name atom knit and it is a fly knit material that has been heated up and then stretched and then pressed okay so that is the the kind of the process that nike went through to make this and it's wild very breathable you can see through so you can see right through it uh and i must say i liked it quite a bit more than the vapor weave that we found in the uh next percent iteration okay uh it was it's wild i don't know what else to say other than it's a it's a wild feel um it all you know what it feels like everyone have you ever sat in a chair that like those old school lawn chairs that um, feel like, you know, kind of loosey goosey, like you might fall through the, uh, the, the lawn chair. It almost feels like that type of material, like the old school from like the 70s and 80s type of lawn chair uh, with, I don't know, that's, that's the first material that comes to mind. Okay. Also in the heel counter, there's a little bit of a pad there that we also found in the next percent. It did fine today. Uh, I think it helps lock down your heel pretty well. Um, again, I'll take it out for some more tests very soon. And there's a little bit of extra, uh, almost like a felt material through the inside of the collar of the shoe that wraps around your ankle. Again, just to give you a little more stability through that upper. Uh, and I guess, yeah, just so that that vape, uh, that atom knit material is not rubbing right, ag right against your ankle. Uh, also, they added a little bit of extra material uh, on top of the shoe, right through the uh, where the eyelet chain will lace over the top of your foot. I think it's probably a smart move, uh, just so that the laces aren't gonna cut into the top of your foot as you're lacing up uh, for your races. And also through that eyelet chain, a little bit of extra rubber has been placed in overlay to make sure those laces stay nice and secure. So again, I think it's a, I think it's a good move overall with that extra rubber, just a little thin layer of overlay uh, on that upper. Moving on to the midsole of the Alpha Fly, right through here, that Zumex midsole foam, plenty of it. I already gave you the stack heights, coupled with these AirPods, okay? This is new, this is different than the 4% and the next percent. And there's, of course, also, there's the carbon full length carbon fiber plate uh, throughout this midsole, uh, what they're calling the fly plate. And it is uh, wider, much, much wider than the next percent. So I am seeing it, like you can hear it, hopefully you can hear that in the microphone, and it, it stretches, the fly plate stretches from side to side, at least through the foreput, uh, forefoot. It starts to uh, get hit, it's hidden, uh, back here through the heel. Maybe we need to do a little surgery. No, not, not yet. I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. I'll come back to that midsole here in a second and moving on to the outsole. Very, very interesting rubber outsole through the forefoot. I would say very uh, grippy. Like it's going to grip the road. I suspect even in wet conditions, very much so. I think it's a uh, I think it's a pretty interesting overall uh, tread pattern that is gonna do better than, definitely dead, better than the 4% and uh, again, probably better than the next percent, but I'll do that comparison later. And then there is that Zumax exposed foam through the heel, but they have added some higher density. Uh, I don't know if it's, if it's the foam rubber uh, composite on the edges here, right here, again, just to increase the durability, especially if you're a heel striker, okay? So 
overall a very fascinating outsole uh, especially when it's coupled with these air pods right here below your forefoot moving on to the fit and the comfort the fit this is a big topic big topic everyone i was reading so many reports early on right when the shoe was released that people were buying half size down for the alpha fly half size down i decided to go true to size and i'm glad that i did and i'm glad that i did no issues okay could i pull off a half size down i probably could you all know if you watch regularly i like a snug fit especially in my race shoes but I didn't, I don't see a necessity for me to go a half size down. Anyway, I don't want to give conflicting thoughts that like, but a lot of people were going a half size down. I didn't see a need for that on today's 23 mile run. All right. And for comfort, well, it's a racing shoe. Uh, so I'm not as concerned about comfort when it comes to racing. I'm leaning more in the direction of performance. And again, no major issues as far as comfort through the upper. Uh, it does, I will say, take a little bit getting used to that carbon fiber plate through the midsole here, especially since it appears to be a much more um, exemplified or a much larger carbon fiber plate in this Alpha Fly versus the Next Percent. Now onto my positives and drawbacks after my first run. Positive, the AirPods the AirPods. Now, I don't know if Nike has a patent. Of course they have a patent on this specific. I don't know how patents work. Lawyers out there, let me know down in the comments. I foresee these AirPods being the game changer moving forward for Nike's marathon racing shoes. It was overly obvious how much energy return I was receiving on today's run it's the air like I, I i the carbon fiber plate yes helping i'm sure i could distinctly see a difference with these airpods through my foot strike and you all know in this marathon training block i've been focused on my foot strike a lot really trying to uh, get up on my forefoot more so i've been working on it now for a couple months and it paid off today because these airpods are directly below your forefoot it was overly like it was even right at the beginning but also even later in the run i could feel those airpods and so that's my positive that's a game changer and i don't know how adidas brooks hoka da, 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 i don't know how they're going to innovate all right in order to compete with that when in the realm of patents all right I just don't understand, I don't know it all legally, but I'm hoping other companies can innovate as well because I'm telling you, it was very, I, I'm really making this point clear because it was, it was very, very obvious, okay? Drawback, cornering, all right? Turning sharp corners, which I did quite a bit today on my 23 miles. So I had to over, I had to, I wanted to make sure I didn't roll an ankle basically. Now, I, I, never, I never got close to rolling my ankle, but I was thinking about it a little bit too much. So on a course with a lot of sharp turns, you know, anyway, just beware. I felt like I had to overthink the turning in the Alpha Fly. For my durability prediction, I think the big question mark for everyone is what's going to happen to the AirPods after 100 miles, 200 miles, 300 miles? We shall see, all right? It's like, I don't know. It, that's, that's the big question that I see floating around there. Now, how will I use this shoe moving forward? Whenever I want to run fast. So time trials coming up, absolutely. And who is this shoe best for? I'm telling you, everyone, that I don't care if you're a five-hour marathon racer or you're a two-hour and 40-minute marathon racer. This shoe is going to help you. I, I, I really believe that. And after 50 miles, I'll give you my final thoughts on that, but it's, um, it's pretty special. It's pretty special. And again, I think it goes, a lot of it goes back to those AirPods coupled with the carbon fiber plates. Yes, the stack height as well, um, but it was, it just was distinctly different than uh, other shoes of the past. And onto that price point, oh Nelly, $275. Is it worth it? We'll see. But I will say, I'm actually pleased because <laughs> I saw early reports that Nike was going to bump it up to, I saw like $350 being floated around and $400. So I'm glad they didn't bump it up that much. So, you know, the next percent, the 4% was $250. So basically this has been bumped up to $275. So $25 more. 
I'm actually pleased that they did that. I, I think that's okay. Uh, I think it's okay. I think it's okay. Uh, obviously, that's a, still a ridiculous amount of money. Uh, but I do believe that with the AirPod innovation, the big carbon fiber plate, everything going on with the upper, that I'm actually shocked that it isn't $300, frankly. Uh, no, anyway, I'll just leave it at that. And on to that question of the day. Cannot wait to read your answers. Here we go. With all the marathons and half marathons being canceled or postponed for the fall, I'm really curious to hear uh, what is going to be your purchasing strategy for your marathon racing shoes, shoe or shoes in 2020. Are you going to buy now? Are you going to buy in the summertime? Are you going to buy in the fall? Now listen, there's no guarantee that races are even going to happen in the fall. We just don't know. So what is going to be your, your strategy again for buying your marathon or half marathon racing shoes? Let's say anytime in 2020. Like, yeah, yeah. Cause it's, it's like, this is a lot of, a lot of carbon fiber plate running shoes, racing shoes are coming onto the marketplace like in the next four to eight weeks, like lots of them. Adidas, Hoka, uh, New Balance. There's, there's just a lot of them. So it's not great timing, frankly, uh, to be releasing a marathon racing shoe right now. Anyway, I just can't wait to hear your thoughts on that. Thanks for watching. They, I, know I, I know I spoke a little longer today, but it's because uh, a lot happened in the 23 miles and I just wanted to get it all out there for you um, to mull over, discuss amongst your, your running buddies, probably through Skype right now, and uh, we can move onward and upward together to fall racing, hopefully, right? I think we're going to get this under control, um, but at the end of the day, um, special shoe. It's a pretty special shoe. So, all right, everyone. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being here. Yes, I'm going to toss it back to the 4% versus next percent comparison for a marathon racing shoe right there. 4% versus next percent right there in case you didn't see it. I think I published it about four or five, four, three or four months ago. So, all right, everyone. Seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. See you tomorrow.